Yes, good afternoon, everybody. And it's uh, beautiful that we can participate today on this uh, extraordinary lecture from Dr. Enz Schrott about the Ayurvedic plants and how they can help us regarding the COVID situation. And um, I would like to thank uh, very much to the Embassy of India in Croatia and His Excellency uh, Srivastava <laughs> um, for um, organizing this event. And regularly now he is <laughs> making available to all people of Croatia and other countries in Europe opportunity to hear some beautiful lectures regarding the yoga and Ayurveda. And uh, today we have really one great master of uh, Ayurveda. I know Dr. Schrott for how many? 35 years. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> it is something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I know his expertise. He is from the very beginning of in the Ayurveda, many, many years so many years and promoting Ayurveda all over the Europe and in the world. He spent many years in India with the highest and greatest Ayurvedic masters from India and especially with Dr. Raju, who is Raj Vaidya. He has very ancient tradition from the grand, 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 grand fathers. They were the, the Ayurvedic doctors of the kings of India. <laughs> And they have a great treasure of the knowledge. And all this treasure of knowledge, uh, Dr. Schrott was uh, uh, learning from Dr. Rajo and transferring to him. And he is really the greatest expert, especially in, in the medicinal plants and also of all kinds of treatments in Ayurveda and uh, also in the Marma therapy. And he is uh, holding uh, uh, seminars all over the world regarding the Marma therapy and also about Ayurveda training medical doctors in different countries for their postgraduate uh, uh, education. And he has uh, his clinic in uh, Regensburg where he is doing his practice many, many years. And also he is the president of the all German Ayurveda uh, organization for uh, in which there is uh, so many medical doctors uh, from Germany uh, participating in that association and they are trained in Ayurveda. And uh, so <clears throat> I would like first uh, um, His Excellency Raj Srivastava to bless us with his uh, introduction for this beautiful uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Yogacharya Miklitz, uh, for actually organizing this. Uh, embassy is only providing the platform. Actually, it is being organized by you, I must acknowledge. And very happy to have this platform where you are bringing experts from different parts of Europe, not only from Croatia. And today we have the pleasure of having Dr. Ernst Strott from Germany, who has, as you said, that has long, long experience of putting a lifetime into Ayurvedic sciences. And I think uh, it is very uh, great opportunity for all the participants today to learn from some of the experiences of Dr. Strott, uh, especially uh, because this is life science. Ayurveda is, as you know, is life science and life science is better learned from the experience of people who have spent lifetime into it. And that's one opportunity that you have created today. Uh, it's very also important that uh, such kind of things we are doing, even though we cannot do it physically meeting people right now, but we are preparing well for eventually the International Ayurveda and Yoga Conference that we are planning to host here in Zagreb and that we will do physically and not virtually. And I think such kind of sessions will build up towards that agenda of that conference, which now we are planning to do in October. We were earlier thinking about June, but now we have postponed it to October, keeping in mind the current pandemic situation in Europe and in India. And at that time, I will, I hope that Dr. Schrott will physically be present uh, in that conference to present the thoughts that he is presenting today in a much more bigger way with possibilities of finding uh, different partners from Europe to work together. 
uh, as you know that we are going through very stressful time all over the world and in india especially right now uh, at a time when you know medical sciences are lagging behind the actual virus pandemic that we are going through and that this is the time when the human strength of internal resolve both mental physical and spiritual becomes very important because when you don't have the physical solutions of medicines and vaccines it is the internal uh, strength that will make you go through this crisis and i think in that context this kind of inter, like long traditional system that we have in civilizations like india it's important to take strength from them not only for these crises but as a daily life routine and i think this is a good part of this crisis where we are getting time to actually uh, look inward and find solutions of giving ourselves immunity giving ourselves immunity not only for ourselves but also for our society so it is in that broader context that this particular session is especially most welcome and thank you very much i look forward to listening to dr shrot thank you thank you very much your excellency it's a great pleasure and an honor for me that you invited me to speak the giftus conference call thank you yadranka and welcome to everyone i will share my screen now if you yes it should be possible so now the topic is medicinal plants and ayurvedic formulations but i made it a little broader when i was talking to yadranka he said yes you can bring something about general um protections people can apply general things they have to take care of and also a small part about vaccination and what we can do to protect our immune system when vaccination has to be for example so let's directly go into it um the first thing i realized when we look all over the world the governments with one exception and that was india the governments were always insisting on two things for corona measurements this was social distancing hygiene concepts face mask and vaccination but so far the third part the for me the most important one strengthening the immune system was almost ignored it was something here and there the people were helping themselves they were taking vitamin d they were taking zinc and vitamin c they were trying out here and there and they were looking up some some recommendations in the youtube or in the internet but officially it was not really transported how important our immune system is i give you one example in my family my nephew his wife she had corona and uh, she is working as a nurse in a munich hospital and she had it with all the symptoms and she had to stay at home in quarantine and her fam family the husband and her two boys the children 6 and 8 years they all lived together and before they knew it that she had the corona they were sleeping together in one bed so the boys arm in arm with the mother the husband aside of the of the wife and after that when they saw oh she has corona they said anyway it's too late now we continue living together and the, the strange thing was uh, when they were tested later they were not positive they didn't get any infection and they had no symptoms so that was a strange thing and many times i hear it really in my daily practice that in families some people don't get it there's some magic around with this uh, with this virus and there seems there seems to be an other protection also and i will i will go a little into this point to understand more holistically what immunity means um so i made this um, second chart for that for me the elementary principles for health and immunity is the primary thing is consciousness the consciousness of the people if you have strong consciousness positive attitude no fear you have that confidence i'm okay everything is fine the possibility that you get um, any infection including cor a corona is much less than when you think oh i'm so full of fear it could touch me every day you understand and there are three factors mainly the one is what we call in ayurveda prana prana is like a life force or the mental strength to reduce it to a very small understanding the mental strength this mental brain strength what we say strong brain strong thinking 
The second one is Agni, biological fire, mainly in our system, metabolism, digestive fire, the energy build, the strengths you get from there, the energy. And then finally, what is most important is orchards. Orchards is the most subtle expression of transcending when you transcend in meditation and the most subtle essence of food, of perfect digestion. And this orchards makes the immunity. It's the basis for immunity. It's the most subtle substance or we could say essence. It's better because it's not really a substance. It's the basis for all kinds of immunity. And then finally, I put this word here, the marmas. I, haven't, I don't have much time to explain the marmas, but just to give you an idea what it is. It is so-called vital points or energy fields on the surface of the body, which um, connect us to the environment and protect us from the environment there. And in the ancient times, the Buddhist monks, they had the power of the strength of the marmas because the Buddhist monks were not allowed to, to attack someone when they are attacked by themselves. So they had to use the strengths of your, their consciousness and their marmas. So the marmas were like uh, covetous, an armor or a shield for them, protecting. So they had that strength that no one could even touch them or hit them. Some people in India still have that ability. I saw a video which came in the Indian television some years ago. And there was a man in South India and Kerala who was showing this strength. No one, this young man, had the possibility to hit him. It was impossible because it's the strength of this marmas and consciousness. Just to tell you how important consciousness is in this context. So altogether, this principle from this, what is called in, in Ayurvedic language, a kavaj or kavacha, at, it's a protective shield or an armor. Now, what are the, the very, very essential, of course, there are many, many more, but the very essential Ayurvedic approaches for immunity. The first, as I said, is consciousness. And for this aspect, we need meditation. We need yoga asanas. We need some pranayamas. We need this knowledge and practice more than ever in the history because this um, human consciousness in the moment because of all the trouble is so much in disbalance and imbalance that only meditation with the collective effect on the collective consciousness will be able to cure everything. This is most important and I really was happy when I saw that the Indian government at the beginning of the corona crisis last year, the first thing they recommended was meditation, yoga, pranayama. This is very, very important. And we also recommend it to everyone who has an open ear for that. So the next thing is, of course, nutrition with the importance of the Agni biological fire, then purification procedures. It's not only Panchakarma, it is the drinking of hot water, taking some Pachanas, some digestives to eliminate the toxins some mild fasting and such things. They often do a very good job. Then of course, lifestyle, living in tune with the laws of nature. This is a very fundamental statement of Ayurveda. That means when you live in tune with the laws of nature, you get the support of nature. Um, if you live against, then it is, you need the energy you're forcing, you have to force and nature is against you. She doesn't want to continue to with all these mistakes. Then environment, of course, it, it is well known now that um, when there is air pollution, the corona is much more prominent, present and more people are killed than in areas where there's fresh air and clear and good climate. And the knowledge of Stapatya Veda, how to build a house, uh, to keep it very simple, it's not only how to build a house, but these things, um, uh, electro smog, too much, uh, uh, these Wi-Fi's and so many things that make, may cause turbulence in the immunity of the people. And then finally, we come to the main point of uh, this lecture is the kingdom of the plants and the minerals. Because nature is giving, supplies us with all the substances, with everything that's needed, basically needed to overcome diseases. 
if you keep it as a holistic approach, if you reduce it only to one substance or one herb, that's not enough. It has to be a complete understanding, a holistic approach of uh, to be protected and to overcome diseases as far as possible. Here again, the qualities of orchards, health and immunity, balance, inner balance, balance of the three doshas, many people know this, then the mental clarity, spiritual and mental strength and happiness. So these are the qualities of orchards. Now we can see, is this something, is, are these aspects in us, are we healthy? Are we in balance? Do we have the mental clarity? Do we have the strengths? Are we happy, basically happy? This play a major role for the strengths of immunity or the weakness of the immunity, which we found so, so many times in our, in our societies. And these are the well-known and common risk factors, uh, not only, not just for corona infection, but generally, but major now, uh, now mainly in corona here, obesity. Um, there is, I was very ast ast astonished, I saw it the last days, that the risk for indoor treatment of COVID-19 increases up to 108%. The higher the obesity is, the more adipose uh, uh, the people are. And uh, it's, it's really a major factor. Then physical inactivity, very, very important, very, very important. The sportsmen or those who have regular physically active, they are not so in the risk. Of course, the aging and all this has an influence of the, the immune system and, and the possibility to get the virus infection. So lack of fitness, obesity, high blood pressure also, metabolic disorders and age, these are the main factors. This is why we are so why we are so much into some informations of, uh, about diet. I don't go much into it because Dr. Schachinger has said a lot of it uh, to this point. Just quickly, to give an understanding, when we digest food, we need the different agnes, that metabolic principles. And if the digestion is complete, you get this most refined essence of food, which is orchards. We were talking all the time now. And the underlying basis of building up tattoos and body tissues is also the ochas. Healthy tissues demands on a strong and good ochas. If this is not properly finished, then you get undigested food, which we call in Ayurveda, ama, not mature, not completely digested. And the ama is the basis, according to Ayurveda, and the understanding from Ayurveda, ama is the basis for all kinds of diseases and mainly also for all kinds of infectious diseases. Now, for improving the agni, for example, we can use different spices. They in itself are concentrated agni. This is helping for digestion. This is also was recommended from Indian government. But this next chart is also very, very important, especially in the Western countries now. There's so much mistake. The people started to have the main meal, not in the noon time, but they have it in the evening. And now you see here the biorhythm of the digestive fire, means Agni. You have a low metabolism in the morning hours. You have the highest Agni or metabolism about noon, 12 o'clock, one o'clock. And then it lowers down again in the evening and then the people go to sleep. When they eat the main meal here, they get so many problems. And one of the problem is to get infectious diseases. Now the very clear recommendation is only three meals a day, nothing in between and nothing in nothing. And the main meal should be at lunchtime. And in the evening, people should avoid a heavy uh, food means animal protein like meat, cheese, fish, eggs, vegetarian food in the evening. And along with this, drink sips of hot water throughout the day. This is helping a lot. And I can tell you in my daily practice, so many people lose, many patients lose their complaints 
by only applying these very simple uh, measurements and recommendations. Another risk factor, which is, was not much um, seen before is um, dental hygiene. So periodontitis, the inflammation of the gums is, it turned out to be a high risk factor for the cause of a COVID-19 infection. A recent study found that COVID-19 patients with periodontal disease were admitted to the intensive care unit 3.5 times more often or, or, or even 4.5 times more often needed a ventilator and almost nine times more likely to die than those without gum disease. This is incredible. And this leads us also to one very important Ayurvedic recommendation generally, but especially now in these days, it is the mouth rinse. You br brush your teeth and afterwards you rinse the mouth with um, sesame oil, for example, or you can also gargle with warm water added with a pinch of turmeric and salt. This acts as a protection, especially the sesame oil is uh, improving the strength of the gums. Um, it reduces the inflammation there in the mouth. It, it reduces the parod parodontitis. It has a local antibiotic effect. So this is a, a, a you very useful recommendation. I, many times we tell it our people here. The next one is nausea treatment. Well, the entrance of the coronavirus is mainly the mucous membranes in the eyes of the eyes and of course of the nose and maybe also in the mouth. This is the main entrance. And with the nausea treatment with sesame oil or any other oil, for example, with almond oil, uh, in India, the very common is anuthylam that can be used, but it's too, too hot for our people here. So we need milder oils. So um, this is protecting when you put a drop of oil into the nostril, left, left and right into the nose and sniff it up. It is uh, making a cover on the nasal mucous membrane and so protects from the entrance of the virus into, into the mucous membrane and into our system. It purifies the nasal passage and it clarifies the mind and it proves agni. In general, this is a common experience you have to try out when you put these oils into, your, into the nose. Inside the nose, you will experience that you get more appetite. So it improves also agni because it has the purifying uh, effect and agni is useful and is necessary for digesting toxins and digesting unproper digested food. And so it has, it is an important factor for purifying the body. Another interesting thing is the cold face wash. They found out that uh, the face wash with cold water for a week increased Im immune globulin type A by up to 25%. And these antibodies, they are localized in the mucous membranes of the eyes, of the nose and in the mouth and in the whole intestinal tract and also in the respiratory tract. So it was interesting to find that COVID-19 patients with low or no symptoms had a high levels of IgA globulin. So this is one explanation why these people didn't get the sickness, didn't get the disease. And especially the young people and the children have much higher levels of IgA than the old people. So a cold face wash is one simple, very simple possibility in the morning as a routine to increase the IgA antibodies. Extremely important is healthy sleep. Extremely important for immunity. There's new search since, since some years it is known that there are lymphatic vessels in the menings of the brain. And uh, this area uh, operates as a garbage disposal system during the sleep. So the drainage system allows the waste materials to be removed and the poor protein removal is maybe also responsible for diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Anyway, when you don't have 
uh, proper sleep, this uh, waste materials, parts, quite an amount, they stay in the brain and weaken your nervous system and finally also weaken your immunity. So now, Yadranku, you may remember this picture. I made it in India when we had been together with um, Dr. Raju. Uh, this is Brahmari, this humming yoga practice. And Brahmari increases nitrate oxide in the uh, oxide in the mucous membrane of the nose and the sinuses by 15 times. Now, the nitrate oxide fights viruses and bacteria in the upper respiratory tract. This is well known. And uh, I think an Australian or Canadian company even developed a spray and aerosol to put into the nose. And this contains the nitrate oxide to increase the content of mix, the, the, the layers of nitrate oxide in the mucous membrane in the nose. So, but with humming, and with singing and humming, we can increase this protective uh, substance there and have another ability and possibility to protect ourselves. Lemon honey water, and now this is the last recommendation before we come to the, the herbs and the plants. Lemon honey water in the morning, lukewarm water, have a lemon and a teaspoon of honey, strengthens the immune system, makes you fit in the morning, supports the elimination of toxins, and supports the absorption of iron. Many people, especially the women, have an iron deficiency. So with the vitamin C of the lemon, it improves. And this means also it improves the immunity, because iron is very necessary for immunity. So I tell you the experience when the people do this, when the patients practice this in the morning. The first thing is they like it. The second is they feel immediately they feel energy. And the third is, they say, since I drink this, I never get an infection. Before I was always somehow prone to infection. Since I drink it, I don't get the infection. Uh -huh, another one, the last one, smoking aromatherapy. Um, you may remember it was in 2003, there was the pestilence in India, especially in Delhi. And in our television uh, uh, news, every day we saw that the thousand people had to be brought to the hospitals and it last, was lasting two, three weeks and no one had really a possibility to stop it. And there was one doctor I personally have learned, it was Dr. Uh, Devendra um, um, Triguna from Delhi. It, he was at that time, he was the, the president of the All India Ayurveda Congress. And he said, I know something, this will help. If it, if it will not help, I will stop my activity as a doctor. And uh, he uh, knew a formula of some um, incense, maybe it was some raisins from, from some trees. I never got the information what it was some incense and two companies uh, produced 200,000 packages of this uh, smoking substance. And it was um, distributed to the households of Delhi and they were smoking the houses and purifying the houses. And within um, two, three days, the scenario has completely stopped. So I think what we should think about is in our houses and especially also where the corona is so much active, smoking and aromatherapy should be included. So for example, frankincense, the, the Boswellia serrata, the Indian one, uh, special herbs, essential oils, I made some examples here, can be evaporated in the house, in the rooms. And it's simply an experience, even there is not really a scientific proof for that, but it's simply an experience that wherever there are this um, kind of uh, pen, uh, epidemic uh, infectious diseases, people started to smoke the houses and clear and clean the houses with the aromatherapy. So it seems to be affected. I'm very convinced that it will be to some extent at least. So this was the first part. Now I come to the Ayurvedic plants and the formulations. Now there's uh, since one or two years now, I think it's one year now, since the beginning of the COVID-19 epidemic, pan pandemic, uh, quite some research was done on Ayurvedic plants. And these are the major ones. This is the 
the uh, Yastimato or the licorice, <clears throat> Vitania somnifera or ashwagandha, Pipali, um, Pipalongum, the long pepper, Tinospora cordifolio, Gudachi, and the ginger, and the um, holy basil, Otsimum sanctum, or Tulsi. And I and also some to some extent some information came about spices there may be some uh, evidence that some spices may be also useful um, fighting against or having let's say having a possible antiviral effect against SARS-CoV-2 so the first one was done um, on coronavirus at the time in 2003 it was about uh, Glycericine, which is the active ingredient of uh, Yastimatu or licorice. And uh, that research was done in the University of Frankfurt and they found compared to other substances, antiviral substances, including the chemical ones, the glycericine was the most active substance in inhibiting the replication of the SARS coronavirus from that time. Now we have a new uh, study which also was done in, in Germany. So the glycericine, the same substance, it exhibits a high antiviral activity against also now the, the novel um, uh, uh, coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, and completely, completely inhibited the viral replication at subtoxic concentration. That means like the concentration of a herbal tea. So it is highly effective in this, uh, in this uh, study has shown. A study by the Stanford University by the end of 2020 found that glycericine blocks the ACE2 receptors on the surface of the lung tissue and thus inhibits the entry into, into the tissue. I will go more deeper afterwards into these receptors and the, the mechani mechanisms of this uh, blocking or the inhibiting of replication. So these two studies show the inhibiting of replication and this shows one mechanism that blocks the entry into lung uh, tissue. So this is a study from Germany. You see um, the percentage of inhibition and uh, it is 100% at a, a dosage and concentration of glycericine, which is beyond toxic, which is the normal dosage of a herbal tea. And it is 100%. Of course, it's only a lab test. Um, so far, we don't have the clinical test, but we have some experience uh, also now with Corona, I will come to that point later, that this really seems to work. So what does it mean, the blockage of the AC2 receptor? No, you must imagine this is a, a pulmonary alveolus schematically. And this um, coronaviruses that penetrate into the lung tissue by using a receptor. The receptor is called ACE um, and ACE2. And now um, the target is not only in the herbal investigation, but generally the target is to block the receptor so that the virus cannot go into it. Now this glycericin, this active ingredient of uh, the licorice, uh, has a high potential to block the re receptor so that the virus cannot penetrate, cannot enter into our lung tissues or even on other mucous membranes like in the nose or in the intestinal system, wherever these AC2 receptors are available. So there's another effect, which was found now, the glycericine inhibits the virus replication by the inhibition of the SARS-CoV-2 main enzyme. There's an enzyme in this virus, which is necessary for its own replication. It's called MPRO, main uh, main um, protease, protease is the name of this enzyme. So, and the concentration of this glycerazine was, um, it was only the, the concentration of a herbal tea. So, um, now the Vitania somnifera, the ashwagandha, has the same effect, 
some substances, active ingredients, some of them are called the vitan vitanolids from the root. They, in general, they are immune boosters and they are a group of bioactives with potential antiviral properties. This was why they were investigated. And they found, scientists found now that the vitanolids inhibit similarly to the licorice or the glycerine, the same protein, and thus they block also the replication of the virus. And the same was found for Tinospora cortifolio, which is guduchi, um, a very, very common herb in Ayurveda, and one of the recommended herbs also from the Indian government, along with the licorice and the, the ashwagandha. So now here I explain more the inhibition of the replication. You see the virus has a, an enzyme called MPRO, and this enzyme is a key factor for its replication. So now different ingredients of different herbs, they inhibit now this MPRO and thus inhibit the replication of the virus. We said Glycerisa glabra, Yastimato, or licorice, Vitania somnifera, or ashwagandha. So the substances are Vitano seed or somniferine, Tinospora cordifolia or guduchi, Tino cordiseed is one of the substances, and also Tulsi, Otsimam sanctum. They isolated some substances of Tulsi, they also block the main protease. I find this really, really fantastic because it comes together with the experience of Ayurveda. From, uh, from thousands of years that these herbs are really useful for all kinds of different kinds of infectious diseases. And now all these plants are rasayanas and strengthen prana, agni, and ochas. Now I will show you, I hope it will work, uh, from a herbal program, more details. So let's first see the glyceris glabra. Yeah. You see here, um, here are the main effects. Rasayana is a rejuvenator. Meteor Rasayana means it is good for the brain. It's a nerve tonic. So the effect on the prana is here. It's an eye tonic. It's a brahmanya. It's giving strength. Um, it increases complexion. Whenever anything is increasing complexion, it increases the power of the, or uh, let's say, improves the quality of the marmas. You remember that word at the very beginning? It's good for the voice and for the throat, of course. It has a soothing effect. And it has a very good mucosa, mucus membrane protecting effect. It is calming the mind and nourishing the mind it promotes contentment and harmony. So we have all the qualities you said at the very beginning, which are needed uh, for good immunity, especially from the aspect of prana. So this are some pictures from a herbal garden here in my place, but it's, uh, licorice is available all over the world. This is from a herbal garden in Indian, down in uh, Rajasthan from, Marisha Ayurveda company there. And uh, well, this some pictures. And this is parts of the root here, like this one. So now let's see the next one. The next one is um, Vitania somnifera. German word is uh, winter kirsche or winter cherry. Ashwagandha. It has the same effect. It's a nerve tonic, again, good for the prana. It's an aphrodisiac, and this means it's good for shukra. And shukra is the, in the seven tattoos, seven tissues, body tissues, is a, a rich source for producing ochres. It's again rejuvenated. It's a brain rasayana, good for the brain, for mental possibilities. It's a tonic. It's even cancer inhibiting, so it improves immunity. It's antiflogistic anti-rheumatic, antioxidant. So you find here a lot of good aspects which are useful in general already for all kinds of infections. And now especially, of course, um, an indicator for this uh, respiratory uh, disease of the COVID-19. Let's see the last one, 
um, maybe we go to Tinospora codifolia. So the same, antiphlogistic rasayana, media rasayana, brain, good for the brain. Uh, it's also rejuvenated. It's a bitter tonic, and this is very important because all the bitter tonics are antibiotics. They are the excellent antibiotic medicines from nature, and, um, and they, they are very useful also for, clear, for cleaning. They are good for the liver, good for the skin, and purify the, and a blood pl uh, purifier. And uh, they are very sattvic also. So this is a short excurs um, to these three special herbs. Now I'll go back here. So they have this licorice, they have other useful effects as we saw just now. They're protective for the mucous membrane. They promote and loosen the mucus. Now, one problem with the coronavirus infection was or is the dry cough, which is really stressful for the patients, the dry cough. And this liquefying some mucus is useful for the patient. And of course, it's anti-inflammatory against inflammation. It's very helpful and useful. And the same with Vitanya, with ashwagandha, anti-inflammatory. And they, ashwagandha is relieving the cough. It's a good cough medicine. It's calming down. And it pro promotes also the mucus. It's soothing the dry cough and it's immune boosting. Another one is ginger. This was also investigated. There was also, they also found some anti-COVID-19 effect. And it's relieving the cough. It's helping generally for respiratory diseases. Um, it's good for the acne, giving strength to the digestive fire. And it's uh, um, against uh, useful accommodative. So now I came to a medicine. I come to a medicine I was using since many years, and our German doctors, many of them, were using it for generally for virus infections. Um, also, in the time when the flu was very common here, and this year it, it didn't come, <clears throat> and it always turned out to be this mixture, this combination of Glycerisa glabra and Vitania somnifera, very very useful, especially in the beginning. We were also surprised the people, the patients were asking, can I have this medicine again? Uh, you gave me last time. Immediately when I took it, um, it was almost gone, my, the, the, this uh, infection I had. So now with the, the COVID-19 disease, of course, we gave the same. When the people were calling, oh, I have the symptoms, and it, I was tested, I'm positive, what can I do? Then immediately we recommended, or I recommended the medicine, and the people said it's immediately helping. So it includes these two substances we were talking all the time. And it's very logic that these um, active ingredients mentioned there did the good uh, job there. Preventive, one can take one tablet twice or thrice daily. In acute infection, I usually gave one tab tablet four times daily. There is one possible side effect because of the glycerisa glabra. When people take too much of it, the blood pressure may increase. When they stop it immediately, it normalizes. But for people with high blood pressure, it might be better to give only any kind of uh, ashwagandha tablets of good quality and good dosage. So what can be done after an infection for prolonged symptoms of COVID-19? My favorite is the Brahmahara Sayana which uh, a name Amri Kalash, this product is mainly available here in Europe. And uh, Amri Kalash as a leham, as a kind of marmalade, or as tablets, or as sugar-free tablets. And uh, this is excellent rasayana to promote orchards. It strengthens and balances the immune system. It is highly effective against free radicals, which are very, very strong. Um, there in, in these diseases, and it is even preventive against allergies, gives energy and protects against side effects of chemotherapy. There's an Indian study that shows that people, patients who have to undergo chemotherapy because of some cancer, the side effects are drastically reduced. And this is also, I really can confirm this 
with my patients. It's excellent medicine uh, against side effects. So this is also useful now for the uh, vaccination for people. I come to this point afterwards. So then we have a number of specific Ayurvedic Rasayanas and medicines for respiratory diseases, weak immunity, post-infective disorders. They have to be given by experienced Ayurvedic physicians and experts. And uh, uh, because of uh, legal reasons, I think I'm, I should not mention brand names here, <clears throat> not to make any problems in this context. So what to do in case of vaccination? First, what kind of uh, vaccinations do we have, vaccine and types? Then what are requirements uh, for vaccination and what are the known possible side effects and what can we do along with necessary vaccination? The first, these are the most common, at least here. We have uh, the BioNTech, Pfizer, BioNTech. We have the Moderna, they are very similar and AstraZeneca and Sputnik, they're also similar. I'll give short explanation. These first two are so-called messenger RNA vaccines. Um, they, the, the messenger, the mRNA, uh, can, can convey the blueprint for a spike protein of the virus and uh, initiates um, the pr production of antibodies against the spike protein protein by the cell's own DNA. So Moderna is the very similar one. And the other group is AstraZeneca, oh, sorry. Um, yes, the AstraZeneca and the Sputnik. They use a virus, uh, a, a rhinovirus, which only makes rhinitis, adenovirus. And uh, the, the one a part of the spike protein is integrated into the DNA of this virus and then transported into the body cells with the vaccination. So then again, from this information, the body produces the antibodies against uh, this part, the spike protein of the virus. It is not so that the virus itself is included, it's only a part of it. And this is the way how uh, the body gets informed. So these are the main, um, ways they produce the, the, uh, the vaccines. What are the contraindications? People with a history of severe allergic anaphylactic reactions, you may have heard that it quite in a number of cases, this has happened after the vaccination with these substances. And also people allergic to polyethylene glycol. This is uh, <clears throat> in an active ingredient carrier in the pharmacy, in industrial applications, in cell biological research and in cosmetic products, and also the polis or but. If there is a known allergy, it's not possible to take these vaccines. So the possible side effects, this is local inflammation, of course, at the place of injection, fever, body aches, bruised feeling, headache, weariness, exhaustion, allergic reaction, facial paralysis this from time to time is coming and sinus thrombosis which may be lethal so these are the possible side effects and um, now what are the the positive effects for protecting the people with this pramara sayana it strengthens and balances the immune system because the immune system is now challenged with the vaccine and it's quite a challenge. You can see this in the reaction of the, of the people then, of the patients. And it is the most effective remedy against the free radicals, according to uh, quite a number of research that had been done in the past. And it is prevent, preventive and healing support against allergies. So it, if there is a tendency of an allergy, it may, I don't know if it's really the case in vaccine, but it may prevent an allergic reaction. It gives energy. Afterwards, this is many times the patients told me when they felt tired and didn't have the energy after the vaccination, immediately it, it came back and it protects possibly against the side effects and it gives the energy. So these are common um, side effects and some recommendations. Uh, you see here something like uh, you have the pain and the swelling at the site of the injection. You put, apply cool pads, 
like a cold chamomile tea, such things. Um, in acute fever, you can give homeopathy, which is really often effective, or the fever decoction, it will come after this. If you have the body aches, bruised feeling, also homeopathy may be useful. Headache, um, a forehead compress with a wash clothes dipped in cold milk is very, very useful, or some homeopathy again. And this exhaustion, weariness, lemon honey wort, and especially the amrit kalash. If any more severe, of course, you have to consultate a doctor. So this will be the herbal decoction. This is a clear Ayurvedic one. I got it from a Dr. Joshi, and I'm grateful for this. I think it was from Delhi, but this is now maybe 25 years ago. And I many times applied it to people, patients who were suffering from fever. Quarter of a teaspoon cumin seeds or powder, quarter of a teaspoon coriander seeds, quarter of a teaspoon ginger powder. And this have to be boiled down uh, to um, a quarter of the, of the beginning of the, and then the first of it has to be drink in the night and the rest in the morning. It stimulates the perspiration, it binds toxin and helps to excrete them. It has an antipyretic, the size of, of uh, anti-fiber fever and anti-fever and anti-fever effect. And it helps against nausea, flatulence, and strengthen digestive power. So this is a short overview of what uh, one can do, daily applications for prevention. Everything what I said already is here, the nausea or Oil massage is also useful, hot water, ginger, uh, tablets with this ashwagandha licorice, uh, daily routine, early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy and wealthy and wise, regular meditation, yoga asanas, fresh air, sunlight, morning walk, maybe some vitamins or sinkum, room purification and aromatis aromatization. So with this, I end my my lecture here, and maybe you have some questions or some comments to it. Thank you very much, Dr. Ernst. It is um, beautiful, really so holistic um, approach uh, regarding this uh, COVID situation. Mm -hmm and how to prevent, how to keep strong immunity. And in case of this uh, now trend to receive vaccinations, how to understand what is the good way to balance the side effects with the uh, Ayurvedic recommendations. So it's uh, very useful. And thank you very much for uh, such uh, all comprehensive knowledge from Ayurveda that you condensed in this uh, one hour <laughs> from the uh, very beginning of understanding of Ayurveda up to the very practical suggestions. Thank you. Yes, My and, uh, yes. and I'll ask uh, His Excellency Raj Srivastava to reflect on this beautiful lecture. <laughs> I need to activate the microphone. Yes, 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 yes. Just a second. Yes. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Very yes. good. No, it was very, very, uh, I would say very professionally done uh, lecture. And I think that everybody was gripped onto the presentation because it was so time relevant, uh, what all we are going through right now and the way doctor uh, uh, has explained, I think it is amazing because uh, it explained not only about the current experience of some specific cases, but also some of the things which we overlook in our life, knowing fully well what are required to be done. And this pandemic is reinforcing those uh, childhood learned practices to be re-implemented in our lives. So that was very well explained. And of course, the vast experience of how the nature uh, available 
plant medicines can be utilized in our life which can then become in balance with the uh, the nature the lifestyle issues i think these are very relevant points and uh, that's why this presentation would generate some best practices that we will follow immediately after this i have at least noted some of the points and i am very happy to also note that these are the point that we keep discussing these days more than in the past thank you very much i don't have any specific questions but i am definitely uh, looking forward to the presence uh, of uh, uh, dr hans to come here to croatia during this ayurveda conference and from now to october we will keep in touch in terms of some of the ideas that we will take from him to make this conference much more relevant to our audiences thank you thank you your excellency it will be a pleasure to come to croatia for many thank reasons you. and now i have another reason <laughs> very good thank you <laughs> thank you yes and um, <clears throat> the dr ernst is um, already half croatian because <laughs> he was many times in croatia and he has many friends here and they know him as a great expert and he was sharing his knowledge uh, many times and we hope very much uh, as soon as possible when this uh, will be normalized that he comes again and we organize some seminars courses and uh, with uh, with him thank you very much ernst thank you for your time and your expertise and uh, we are very grateful to you and we are waiting for you yeah so all the best to everyone take good day goodbye thank you very much okay bye thank you <laughs> and bye everybody and uh, please apply this uh, very precious knowledge in your life and then you are on a sh sure stand hmm? very safe thank you all of you and uh, your excellency thank you for organizing and uh, see you next time on some other topic thank you yadranko always bye 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 <laughs>